Hi, this is Barry here, and you're very welcome to today's podcast episode from rightcom.com. And today we're going to have a look at three ways to stand out in the email inbox. Now, before I get to these three points, um, if you have been putting off building an email list, I really think you should start straight away. Even if you only got one person on your email list, you know, you should be emailing that person on a regular basis and building a relationship between them. You know, in the early days, and maybe it's the same notion you have in your head too. Maybe you feel that you need to have a hundred subscribers before you're gonna bother, you know, doing the extra work. Or maybe you feel maybe you need a thousand subscribers. And once you have that up, then you know that's gonna be the day that you are going to, you know, take action and write those emails or do whatever that you know needs to be done. And I'm here to tell you that you know. When you think about it, I would rather make my mistakes in front of 10 people than a 1,000 people. And it's probably the same for you too. You know, you're going to make mistakes in the very big, very beginning when you're writing your emails. You're going to be writing content maybe that people aren't interested in. You're going to send out work with broken hyperlinks. or You're going to make all those mistakes. And, you know, I would rather make those mistakes in front of 10 people than a 1,000 people. And that's why I feel that even if you only got one subscriber on your email list, there's no reason why you shouldn't be, you know, getting all those things or making all the mistakes in the early days when nobody's going to really notice and not wait for that magical number you know that hundred or thousand subscribers you know, that you're looking for that before you start actually taking action on emailing those people so with that out of the way let's kick it off with what are the first thing you can do to uh, stand out in the email inbox and the first thing I'd highly recommend is share to be remembered you know when I go to my email inbox I know if I open it right now and I go through the 10 or 15 emails that are in there there's hardly anybody in there that I'm going to remember after I close the email inbox. You know, all of you know, there's so many marketers that are emailing me on a regular basis, and you know, after reading maybe two or three emails, they just kind of you know go into this kind of big ball of blandness where you know I can't tell one person from the other. And maybe it's going to be the same for you too. You're going to get emails from people, and you're going to say. I don't remember buying nothing off that person or you know how do I know this person or how do they get my email address and you know it's it's a sad thing that you know when you you know when you see a person's name in the email inbox when you've got no connection with them when you when you can't remember anything about them you know I think that's they've, they've done you know they haven't done themselves any favors because that's the first thing you need to do is to share to be remembered you know when you're reading listening to this podcast episode if I said to you my name is Barry J McDonald my wife's Catherine I've got four kids uh, three boys and a girl and I've got two dogs well I used to have two dogs until one recent until recently when we had to get one put down you know you're going to go away from this podcast and you're going to know a little bit more about me and so it is with your emails you know you should be sharing things about yourself you know letting people in to know more about you to you know for example um one of the emails i wrote recently to my list was about an accident i nearly had years and years ago on a motorbike when i was driving home on a foggy night and you know in a split second this kind of shadow passed by me and i didn't know what it was so i looked in the rear view mirror of the bike and there was a cow standing in the middle of the road. So if I had been maybe two feet to the right, I probably would have slammed into that cow. And who knows, I mightn't be here because of that. So I had shared that moment in my email. And I'm sure some of my subscribers still remember that. There was another time I shared another story of where I was helping my father out when the truck. And I pulled down a load of all these metal bars on top of my legs. And there were, you know, I was trapped and pinned down. And my father was sure that my legs were crushed. So I'd gone through the whole story of how he, you know, saved me, pulled me out. And my legs were fine. So, you know, my subscribers know in those two emails, they know a lot about more about me than probably the majority of marketers that are coming into your email inbox or whoever is emailing your list. You know, you need to share a little bit about yourself. Now, you may say to yourself, well, I'm not this big celebrity and, you know, maybe I'm a housewife and, you know, the only exciting thing maybe I do every week is, you know, go to the soccer practice on a Saturday morning with the kids or whatever it is. You know, I haven't got this fantastic lifestyle of, you know, the Instagram thing where I'm touring all around the world I'm going to these fancy events and you know I'm just this and I'm just that you know you don't need to have all those different things you know I would be the same myself I wouldn't put myself up in this kind of you know glam or kind of huge kind of lifestyle I'm touring the world or anything like that I would just say to myself I'm working at home a dad you know I have crazy things happen to me the kids say something silly in the car or you know uh, I made this stupid mistake or I made a fool out of myself or this thing from my childhood I'll always remember it you know and these are the kind of things that I bring up in my emails. And because of that, then, you know, those small things are little things that are building the bond between me and that, you know, that subscriber. You know, probably the majority of my subscribers maybe maybe no, might know more about me than, you know, some of my close friends or, you know, people that, uh, you know, who aren't, you know, I'm in touch with anymore because 
you know, I'm sharing all these little events that are happening in my life and so it is to be with you too you know you need to share a little bit about yourself with your subscribers you know build a little bit of a bond something that's going to separate you because as I said I can go back to my email inbox right now I can read through all those emails and not one person will stand it or you know it's all going to be bye 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 and there's no relationship building they're, they're not letting me in and you know things that are happening to them and you know there's no nothing interest in there that can latch on to and you know there's so when I close that email inbox there's nothing that's going to make me remember them. So the next time when I come back to the email inbox, you know, if I see their name again, I'm not going to think, oh, that's such and such. Yeah, I remember his story about the cat or whatever it is. And so it is with your subscribers or your customers. You know, you need to share to be remembered. Another thing then too is avoid subject line trickery. And this is something that uh, just drives me up the wall. And again, it's a lot of internet marketers and all these kind of so-called people that know what they're doing. You know, they'll try and trick you with, you know, you really need to read this email. You know, this is a subject line. This is the most important email you'll ever read. And by the time you get into the email, you wrote, you've read through the whole thing and you come to the bottom and you say, you know, what was that important thing that I was supposed to have heard? Or, you know, maybe they start an email with this RE as if they're responding to an email that you sent them, but you've never been in touch with them. You know, and they're trying all this trickery and maybe they've uh, a report or a course that says, you know, buy buy my uh, templates, my subject line templates, because each one of these subject lines has been opened 40% of the time, 50% of the time, or whatever it is, and they dupe you into thinking that, you know, if you take those subject lines and slot them into your autoresponder or use them in your daily emails, you know, your subscribers are just going to jump all over them and they're going to open them like crazy. And the fact is, you know, it's ridiculous. It really, really is. You know, if your best friend came to the door and said to you, hey, you won't believe what you said, or you've got to see this amazing widget, you know, you would you look at me and say, well, why are you talking like that? You know, if they were your best friend, you would open the door and you say, come on in, let's have a conversation. And so it should be like when your subscriber opens their email, you know, the inbox and sees you, you know, they're going to look on the left hand side. They're going to say, oh, there's Barry. I wonder what's going on in his life today. And they're going to open it up. They're not going to look at my name and say, read the subject line and say, I have this amazing gadget. You know, because they're not going to say, wow, I need to find out what that amazing gadget is, you know. That's why, you know, when you build a relationship with your subscriber, even if you use a weak subject line, you know, if they're glad to see it, they're going to open that. You know, I know myself that, you know, there's um, marketers that I follow and 100% of the time I will open every single email that they send. And majority of the time I don't even look at the subject line. I might do a quick scan through, but when I see it come from them, you know, I'll open it because I like that person. I like writing, reading their content. So I think if you have to trick your subscribers with these kind of subject lines, these things that are supposedly going to give you a huge click through written, you know, you're sadly mistaken. Just save your money and, you know, put it on something else because, you know, you need to avoid that. You know, that just tells me then that you have no connection with that subscriber. You know, when you have to stoop that low, you have to get all these kind of, you know, trickery and that in to get people to open your emails. So, you know, build a relationship with them and avoid that thing. Just, you know, don't be that friend that comes to the door shouting out these weird slogans just to get someone's attention because you're just going to make yourself look like an idiot. Another thing then too, and finally, is to show up regularly. You know, for example, when I wrote um, romance fiction, uh, the, the, the category, the subcategory of the romance fiction I was in was I used to write in the mail order bright section. Now, at the time, I had a little bit of an email list, but my heart wasn't really in it, so I didn't stay in it for long. But I know that if I had, you know, if I was really into writing that uh, romance and I had done it for a long time, and I had been building that email list of readers who had bought my books before, I know then when, you know, if I was showing up on a regular basis, you know, when they would say to myself, God, I'm interested in buying a mail order bride book, straight away my mind, my name would come first to their mind because I'm constantly in their email inbox and I'm talking about my love of mail order bride books and I'm talking about my love of romance books and how I enjoy writing them and how I came up with the idea for that character in my latest mail order bride book. And so it is with you, you know, you need to be showing up on a regular basis, whatever it is that you're selling, you need to be the go-to guy. You need to be the first first name that comes to their mind when they're thinking of whatever it is they're looking to buy. You know, if you were looking for somebody who was, um, maybe for example, they wanted to buy some video software and you're showing up on a regular basis and you're going on about video and how to do this with video, how to do that video and all the video software you have. You know, there could be a hundred people who could be selling the same video software, but because they're not showing up regularly in that inbox, straight away when I think of video software, you're the only person that I think of. And because of that, yeah, and you stand head and shoulders above everybody else. You know, we look back at all the kind of well-known celebrities years ago, like the Marlon Monroe's, the Elvis's, John Lennon's and all that. And at the time, like, they were the most popular person in the world. Like, um, you know, probably close to 100% of the people in the world knew who they were. And, 
you know, you ask kids nowadays, who's Marlon Monroe, who's John Lennon, who's Elvis? And they look at you and they go, who? You know, that, that, that moment is gone because that person is gone and you know, they're not showing up regularly. You know, you, you, when you're building an email list, you know, you may think you're the best well-known person, such a thing, but somebody's going to come in and maybe be interested in video software and, you know, to, you know, to them, you're going to be an unknown. So if you're not showing up regularly, you're going to find new waves of people constantly coming on and join your email list. And that is why you might think, you said, well, I've been emailing this list for, you know, two years. Everybody knows me on my email list. You know, you could have people that be joined yesterday or maybe the day before who know very little about you, maybe know, maybe know nothing about you. And you need to constantly keep rebuilding that, you know, that relationship over and over again. You need to be showing up regularly. And, you know, if you're not, you're going to be like those celebrities, the Elvises and the Marlon Monroes. You know, you're just going to fade away into oblivion. And then when it comes to buying that software or it comes to buying those mail order bright books, you know, you're not going to be the first person that comes to mind because you're not showing up regularly in the email inbox. So those are three things I highly recommend that you should pay attention to when you are writing your emails. You know, show up regularly. Avoid the, the, the subline trickery, you know, build a relationship with your subscriber that when they see your name in the email inbox, you know, they're going to know you who you are and they're going to enjoy, you know, finding out what's going on in your life. You know, they want to know a little bit more about you and, you know, share to be remembered. So if you enjoyed this podcast episode, I would really, really appreciate it if you would share with even one more person or go onto social media and send a tweet out or a like or tell people, you know, what you're listening to and what you've learned. It would be really, really appreciated. And as well, too, if you are interested in email writing or maybe you are, you know, a writer, a fiction or nonfiction, I have a great free report over on the WriteCom site. That's W-R-I-T-E-C-O-M-E. And the great free report is called Words, Wisdom and Winning. And it's going to show you secret tricks and tips and things that I have learned over the years that have, you know, saved me time and, you know, saved me money and made stop me making the stupid mistake I had made previously beforehand. And you can pick up a free copy if you just come straight over to the site. Uh, you'll find it there so as always thanks for sharing your time with me again today it's been really really appreciated and take care and have a great day bye-bye